How evil can you truly be in Hogwarts Legacy? This is something I really wanted to find out, so in my last playthrough, I strove to make every bad decision in the game to see just how much of a jerk we can be. What's up everyone, Big Dan here, and in this video, we're going to dive into the worst playthrough ever of Hogwarts Legacy. Creating a truly evil bastard starts in character creation, and staying in my tradition of crafting bald protagonists in my worst playthroughs, I present to you Baldemort Baldo, a Slytherin fifth year about to unleash havoc in Hogwarts. Now I will say off the bat, most of the bad decisions in Hogwarts Legacy happen in fetch quests. The main story is pretty linear, but at least we can pester some fellow students by ruining their plans. Our first victim is Zenobia Noak. This nerd got bullied by her fellow classmates because she consistently beat them at Gobstones, a game where the loser is sprayed with a nasty odor. She asks us to fetch her Gobstone collection, which other students have hid in high places throughout the castle. We're happy to fetch those stones, but don't think we'll just hand them over to her. Well, <clears throat> may I have my Gobstones back? I'm afraid I've decided to keep them. That'll teach you to stink up your classmates. What? You'd keep my prize collection for yourself? Yes. Find his keepers, I'm afraid. I knew it! You're just as bad as everyone else! I hate this school! You'll all be sorry when I learn some more spells! Hilariously, if you bump into Zenobia later, she'll have some choice words for you. I'm still rebuilding my Gobstones collection, thanks to you. Puffskeen Duncan is a nervous Hufflepuff student who earned his nickname by revealing his fear of these things. He asks us to fetch a venomous plant to prove to the other students that he's actually very brave. But that's kind of stolen valor, isn't it? Hello, Duncan. I have the proof you wanted. That's one leaf. Must have been a giant venomous tentacular. It's even more than I expected. I knew you were the one to ask. I appreciate you getting it for me. Now that I think about it, Puffskeen Dunkeen, I think I shall keep this. You need to overcome your cowardice. You can't be serious. <gasps> this is awful. I don't know what to do now. I'm doing you a favor. Disappointment like this will encourage you to become a stronger person. I don't need to be stronger. I need to be left alone. Even Zenobia Noak will make fun of me now. You've wasted my time. You're not who I thought you were. My favorite interaction is with Lenora Everly, the Hufflepuff witch who introduces those butterfly puzzles. After discovering the solution to the puzzle, we can report back to Lenora, only to tell her we won't let her in on the secret. Lenora, I solved the mystery of that painting. You did? How? I'm afraid I can't tell you, Lenora. Surely you jest! You should have worked it out on your own. You have nerve, especially since I'm the one who told you about it in the first place. Imagine solving a riddle that I mentioned and then not telling me the answer. Practically competing with an elder to see who's a more infuriating know-it-all. There's something so funny to me about agreeing to obtain information for somebody, getting the info, and then going all the way back to them only to say you won't reveal the answer. You're just going out of your way to be an asshole at that point. Sophronia Franklin is a trivia-filled Ravenclaw student who asks us to track down an old robe from some DePalso witch. She actually seems like a nice person, so I decided to show it to her. Nah, just kidding. Incredible! Then you found Herodiana's outfit. May I see it? You were right about how spectacular it is. Which is why it's a pity you didn't find it yourself. You double-crossing cur. I can't believe I told you about the Hall of Herodiana. Oh, I should have waited and done it myself. It would have only been two more years. You don't deserve to possess such an invaluable and historic outfit. Cressida Bloom is a busybody Gryffindor student whose incriminating diary got strewn about the library. We retrieve the pages for her, only to discover she's been gossiping about other students. This is a great opportunity to blackmail her for some extra cash. Hello, Cressida. 
I collected your books, including your diary. Oh, what a relief. Thank you. I'll happily take the heavy lot off your hands now. Unless you want your classmates to know how you really feel about them, you might reward me for my time. Oh, you're not at all who I thought you to be. And you're not who I thought you to be. Based upon your diary, you seem terribly judgmental. Fine. I shall pay you. But you cannot begin to imagine what I shall be writing about you next. Now don't think we're only bullying students from other houses. We also stick it to the Slytherins like Grace Pinch Smedley, a smug witch who cares too much about her family legacy. She asks us to dive into a pond to retrieve her grandfather's astrolabe, so naturally, we decide to keep it for ourselves. Did you find the astrolabe? I did find it. However, I've taken a liking to it, so I'm going to keep it. What? But you can't. It doesn't belong to you. Find us keepers, Grace. I can't believe this. Father's stupid oath just cost us a priceless family artifact. I hope your new astrolabe brings you nothing but sorrow. If you can even work out how to use it. The most hilarious thing about this is we can't even do anything with the astrolabe. We can't use it. We can't sell it. So it just sits in our inventory, and the only benefit we get is the satisfaction of telling Grace to shove off. She won't forget about this either, and we do see her again during a round of Summoner's Court. Hello, Grace. What are you doing here? You've a nerve, speaking to me after what you did. I hope you're taking good care of my priceless family astrolabe. I'm just here for Summoner's Court. Fine. Would be nice to take you down a peg. Akio! Impressive. Well, it appears I've been bested. Ha! Huh. Wasn't enough you kept my family astrolabe, was it? You had to beat me at Sumner's Court as well. There wasn't much to it. You really are insufferable. Narita Roberts is probably the nerdiest Slytherin student in the game. She decided to forge diplomatic relations with the Mer people, which led to an exchange of gifts. Unfortunately, they left her gift in an underwater cave, and she can't swim, which presents us with a great opportunity to snag the gift for ourselves. Your gift from the Mer people was exactly where they said it would be. Oh, that's wonderful news! I was so worried I'd left it too long and they'd seen it as a slight. Our relationship with them is already so tenuous. I quite like the idea of an authentic Mermish artifact. I'm tempted to keep it myself. What? Why would you do that? That gift was a gesture of goodwill, a symbol of hope. I was going to show it to the Ministry. If you really wanted this, then perhaps you should have fetched it yourself. I would, if I knew how to swim. I just hope you haven't set relations between wizard kind and mer people back decades. I think one of the worst things you can do to someone is separate them from a loved one or pet. And this is probably the most evil thing we could do in Hogwarts Legacy. In Hogsmeade, we'll meet a goblin on the brink because his pet Mooncalf was kidnapped by poachers. Never thought I was one for a pet of any kind. But now I can't imagine life without her. Wait, is he talking about deleting himself? Don't worry, pal. We'll get Biscuit somewhere safe for you. Biscuit is fine, as am I. I was able to rescue her without much incident. Oh, mercy. Where poachers are concerned, I tend to expect the worst. I cannot wait to get her home. I so miss seeing her dance in the evenings. Such joy. I think Biscuit will be safer with me, Garnif. What? No. You can't take my Biscuit from me. What will I do without her? Biscuit is clearly not safe with you, and I know how to protect her. Perhaps Ramrock was right about wizard kind, always thinking yourself superior to others. May I never be so unfortunate as to cross paths with you again? There is another lady you can do this to as well, but honestly, she seems like a bit of a poacher herself, so I think keeping the animal in that case would ultimately be the good option. Sebastian's questline affords us the opportunity to learn unforgivable curses. 
And like a good hypocrite bad guy, we decide to learn those curses and use them, meanwhile scolding Sebastian for doing the same. The Imperious Curse saved Anne's life. That goblin was going to kill her. There was little time to react, but it was an unforgivable curse. How can you say that? You just used the Imperious Curse on Ominous. I did, but with his consent, Sebastian. It may seem an irrelevant difference, but it is a difference. After Sebastian one-shots his uncle, we also commit the grave sin of ratting him out. Sorry, pal. There can only be one dark wizard at Hogwarts. Me. I don't want to lose Sebastian, but I don't think we have a choice. We don't have a choice. You're right. You were right the entire time. I wish I hadn't been. If we do this, we may never see Sebastian again. I realize that, but it's the right thing to do. He killed his uncle. We've tried to justify his actions every step of the way, but this has gone too far. It has to stop. Very well. Leave it to me. I'll tell the headmaster. At the end of the game, we finally come face to face with Isadora's giant ball of ancient magic, which the Keepers so diligently kept secret for all these years. And much to Professor Fig's dismay, we reveal our plans to seize this magic for ourselves. Miriam believed this forgotten magic could be used for such good, but she did not know the risks. She did not see what the Keepers have shown you, what Isadora showed you. You are now the keeper of whatever power it holds. What do you intend to do with it? I have decided to open the repository. Its power cannot lie dormant for centuries more. After everything you've seen, what about Isadora's fate? Isadora wasted her ability trying to save people from themselves. I will not let others dictate what I do with this... my... power. You cannot possibly mean that. You, of all wizard kind, are wholly aware of the misery and pain that that could cause. So there you have it, the worst playthrough ever in Hogwarts Legacy. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more Hogwarts Legacy and RPG videos. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.